Skelnar 704, take one. CBS presents this program in color. From Television City in Hollywood. The Red Skelton Hour. very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel good. I've got it, fellas. The pill. <laughs> I've got the pill, fellas. The fellow that invented this is a vitamin pill. It's got all the kind of vitamins in it in the world and with the wheat germs and everything. And the fellow that invented it or discovered it took three of them a day. And at 80 years old now, he's already been dead 30 years. <laughs> yeah. I feel good tonight. Here we are to start our 17th season in the... <laughs> you take that and you'll bounce all over the place <laughs> this, We're ready to start my 17th season in, in uh, television And I'm just as surprised as you are you know? <laughs> We got a lot of the old crew back with us David Rose, we've been together now for 21 years In radio and in television And you know, David Rose got his start With Phil Spatownley's orchestra All girl orchestra it was And uh, <laughs> He took the pill <laughs> He played the piano, he played the piano, but he went under the name of Rose David. <laughs> I feel good though. I, 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 I took a little trip this summer. I went to England. I met Twiggy. I met Twiggy, I think. <laughs> boy, there's a pogo stick with a motor in it, huh? <laughs> hey boy, isn't she skinny though? Huh? I'll tell you, her chest got sunburned and her back started to peel. <laughs> Boy, when she gets sunburned, she looks like the stopper in an iodine bottle. <laughs> hey, and while I was in London, I saw that, oh, the fellas over there, you ought to see them. Long hair, this one guy had long hair, earrings, and a bracelet that says, I'm a man. <laughs> Those haircuts, I tell you, they look, well, they look kind of funny. I saw one guy this afternoon look like crabgrass with a part. <laughs> I don't mind the kids wearing their hair long, the fellas, but when they got these bobby pins, it says his and hers. <laughs> I remember when I was a little boy, when I was a little boy, you used to wear these corduroy knickers. You remember those? Corduroy, yeah, you remember them thing? <laughs> you looked like your knees had the mumps. <laughs> and my sister, you should have seen my sister. She was a doll, real doll, had her hair pasted on, you know. <laughs> Seersucker bloomers with raccoon bows. <laughs> She says to me, I'm just a silly girl uh, in cotton stockings and I want to go to the city. You think anything will happen to me? I says, not in cotton stockings. <laughs> hey, I remember one time that the city banker, he came over to our house and he looked at my sister and he says, kiss me. And she kissed him and he says, the house is yours. The kiss paid for the house. You don't know a thing. Is there anything else I can do for you? I said, yeah, kiss the horse. The hay ain't paid for either. <laughs> And back in those days, the kids in school, I remember in school one day, a little kid, and uh, we walked up to the teacher and said to the teacher, 
What is G-I-R-L-S spelled? She says, girls. I said, come on, I told you we was in the wrong room. <laughs> you know, the, the things that happen to the kids nowadays, you can't really blame them for what happens. Like the neighbor of mine, he doesn't want his kid to, uh, to miss things. Now, he wanted him to have things that he had never had. So instead of sending him to a summer camp, he sent him to the bunny club. <laughs> Hey, you know, one year I wanted to send Valentina to a, a summer camp, and the guy says, it'd be $400 for two weeks. I says, $400 for two weeks? I didn't spend that much on my honeymoon. He says, well, you don't understand. We only sleep two to a tent. I said, so did I. <laughs> you know, those kids are cute at the summer camps, though. One little kid came up to me. He said, I said, what'd you learn at the summer camp? He says, never to bite my fingernails anymore. I said, who taught you that? He said, poison ivy. <laughs> And it brings back memories of little kids and stuff. I remember when I was in school. <laughs> you know how long ago I went to school? You, you know Lincoln's Gettysburg Address? It was a current event. <laughs> hey, I got one for you. I got one for you. Two seagulls. Two seagulls. Gertrude and Heathcliff, they're talking. He says, uh, well, sir, I think I'll go on the Ed Sullivan show. Go on there and do some imitations. Old Ed loves imitations, you know. He says, what are you going to do? He says, watch this one. Peck, peck, ouch. Peck, 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 ouch. Peck, 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 ouch. How do you like that? Woodpecker with chapped lips. <laughs> hey, uh, Ed Sullivan was out here, and, and I went to the races with him. And standing there, I got an idea. Wouldn't it be funny to try to try and do a pantomime of, of a jockey, a crooked jockey, who wants to throw the race because he's bet on the other horses, not himself, see? So with that, my, I'd like to do a pantomime of a crooked jockey trying to throw a race. Hmm. He's got a... Baby, what's 
you want to change your mind with me tonight. We dig romance and love you all for wanting to. Say maybe just a little kiss will make you see the light. But if you treat us like the devil. Down here we're strictly on the level. Us that we'd make the scene if we could. Oh, lady, why not try to be good to me? Red Skelton as George Appleby, Eve Arden, and Robert Stack in For Better or Worse Like George Appleby Got. No, there's no one here by that name. This is the home of that idiot, George Appleby. And this is his idiot wife speaking. Well, I'd have to be. I married him, didn't I? <laughs> George, when you finish the dishes and the mopping and the laundry, get in here and fix the radio. Yes, sweetie pie, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. George. Good heavens, listen to the rain on the roof. <laughs> George, why are you wearing a feed bag? Are you trying to imply that I make you work like a horse? <laughs> Does that answer your question? Move over, Nellie. I do not treat you like a horse, George. Oh. Now giddy up and get back to work. <laughs> was that phone call for me? Yes, it was a wrong number. And if anybody fits that description, you do. <laughs> now fix the radio. I want to hear Phyllis Diller's beauty hints. <laughs> I'll give you a beauty hint. Get a new face. <laughs> what did you say? I said you're beautiful. You, you should uh, wear blue lace. I heard what you said. Then George. why did you have me repeat it? <laughs> oh, honestly, George, whatever happened to the sweet, kind, devoted young man I fell in love with first. The Indians killed him at the Little Bighorn. <laughs> George, would you hand me my purse, dear, please? Sure, there you are. There Thank you. Are, you. Now, George, you're not going to stand there in front of a lady with your hat on. I'm sorry, I didn't oh. notice. <laughs> I don't mind getting clobbered, but why do I have to pass the ammunition? Lordy. <laughs> Here, hold those two wires. <laughs> Couldn't I get electrocuted? We we'll never know until we try. <laughs> here, I'll fix it down here. There, there, that should do. That is extremely dangerous. We repeat, Bobo Magoon has escaped prison and is believed to be hiding out on the north side. 
Remember, this criminal is mean, cruel, vicious, and bloodthirsty. Beware of Bobo Magoon. Hey, your mother's working under a different name. <laughs> oh, don't answer that, George. It might be that escaped convict. Oh, don't be silly. Since when do escaped convicts go around ringing doorbells? I tell you, I don't know him. Oh, come in, Reverend. <laughs> You take in boarders? No, we don't. No. <laughs> What's the English I put on that thing? <laughs> <laughs> you missed that one altogether. All right, folks, go back into your houses. There's nothing going on. <laughs> You'll take in boarders. Oh, yes, right down here, and I'll answer you. Oh, well. Uh, Yes, I'll show you the brutal the bridal suite. So convicts don't ring doorbells, eh? Hey, no. George Appleby, don't just stand there. Throw that bum out uh, on his ear. Shut up. Ooh. Hey, that works. You want to sell it? <laughs> you two alone? Oh, we do have parakeets. One more crack and I'm going to have you gift trap. Oh. Oh. Cement. Oh. oh, you will? Yeah, oh. yeah, they're building a new freeway. You'd make a great off-ramp. Well, if you don't stop pulling my nose, there's going to be a bump in the road. <laughs> Don't fool around with me. Just remember, I'm the guy that chopped Big Sam in half. You chopped Big Sam in half? Oh, he's little Charlie and little Harry. Did you hear that? <laughs> Charlie's a little Harry, he said. <laughs> George, what? sneak up behind him and slug him. Good. You can't do that. He's our guest. He's oh, for guest. heaven's sakes, George, show some backbone. Backbone? You remember where you keep it, right under your yellow streak. <laughs> George, here, hit him with this ashtray. I can't do that. It's got ashes in it. Well, what difference does that make? We only want to knock him out. We don't want to get him dirty. <laughs> oh, have a bonbon? Here, here's a big one. I didn't do so well this morning. It was raining when I got up. This one has no writing on it. No writing. <laughs> what were you two talking about? Oh, um, I, I was just saying to, to my dear little wife here, uh, 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 who's expecting. Uh, she's expecting me to come up for an answer with this here. Oh, um, I, she was just uh, hoping that I wouldn't mention that there's a gun in the piano. Oh, a gun in the piano. Oh, I told him about the gun in the piano. It's right in there. Ah, 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 I didn't see any gun. It's in there. Look real hard for it. Oh, George, you fool. You ruined my piano. Let Liberace play something on that thing now. I used to be a major in the army, you know. Oh, oh, oh. Clara, 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 he's choking me with a tie you bought me. Now that's what I call a useful Christmas present. <laughs> well, fast one on Boba Magoon, huh? No, I ought to tear your ears off and shove them down your throat. Really careful, there's hair under there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you try that, you try that again, and I'll pick up that piano, and I'll play the anvil chorus on your stupid head. All right. And where do you think you're going? Well, I'm going to see if there's a piano clause in his insurance. No, you're not. You're going to go in there and cook me something right now. Don't do it. Don't do it. You better look and see if you've got a clause in your insurance policy. Yeah. You should see what happened out in the kitchen the other day. She forget it. <laughs> if you try any tricks, I'll bump her off. You wouldn't. Here, take a card. Take a card. <laughs> oh. Get her, get her, get her. Oh. Where are you going? Never mind, George. <laughs> Get away with that. Now, I ain't no hokey pokey. Me be pokey hokey, but not a hokey pokey. Hello, operator. Operator, get me the police headquarters. No dumb crook's gonna make a sucker out of George Appleby. Hello, police headquarters. Police headquarters? Uh, sure, and this is the police department. Sergeant Rafferty here. Sergeant Rafferty. Let me tell you something. Bobo McGoon is hiding out in our house. Well, He's out now, in the kitchen. Uh, you'll be nice to him. He's a sweet broth of a lad. All right, I'll do... Sweet broth of a lad? He's a no-good murdering thief, that's what he is. He's a crook. Oh, I just got a wire. Hey. <laughs> oh, he's a sweet broth of a lad, I'll tell you that. Yes, sir, he's a doll. He wouldn't hurt a fly. Um, 
Pull a hair in your chest, but he wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> oh, now you'll get in trouble. You didn't wait for the dial tone. <laughs> what to do? Take your car and I'll drive to Mexico to my hideout. Not my car! Well, not only that, but I'm gonna use your wife as a hostage. No! Okay, here's the keys. <laughs> all right, all right, come on, come on. I'm not leaving. Oh, you shoot. Oh, oh George! Shoot what are you doing? I carried you in over the threshold and you're going out the same way. <laughs> I don't know why you had to bring me along. Well, it's an old Mexican custom, George. They always use a jackass to carry the luggage. <laughs> well, here you are. <laughs> I'm not going to carry it any further. There, you take this stuff from there. Well, this is just like the cover of House Beautiful. Yeah, it is. Um, how much does it cost you a month to keep this, this so dirty? My, This is my little house away from the big house. Oh. How do you like my idol? What are you hiding away from, the Board of Health? Yeah, what are you hiding from the board of health? <laughs> oh. oh, it's the first thing I've had on my stomach today. I love period furniture, don't you, George? Yeah. What is this? Early pig pen? Yeah, it's early pig pen. <laughs> Look, buddy, how come every time she tells one of those lousy jokes, you clunk me? My mama told me never to belt a lady. Your mommy done told you, huh? Well, remember that if you ever meet one. All right, come on. I used to go over there and sit down. Come on, put it on the wood. Till the heat's off, you're going to be my protection. And if you try to escape, Pedro will cut you down in your tracks. Pedro? The roughest bandito in all Mexico. No. Hey, Pedro. <laughs> I wouldn't touch my next line with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> Look at them hand grenades. You mean this is Pedro? My right-hand man. Right-hand man, huh? Let's go outside and talk this over man to man. Huh? <laughs> George, how can you be stupid enough to think that that's a man? Well, if you're a woman, what else is he? <laughs> All right, Pedro, go guard the door. And shoot the first thing that moves. No, 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 no. <laughs> Make the second thing. The second thing. <laughs> Isn't it amazing what they can do with Mexican jumping beans? <laughs> All right, now, don't try anything. I'm going to go outside and rustle some grub. Oh, you don't have to do that. Just get on the phone and call Tatia Delight. <laughs> I've got a feeling that we're never going to get out of here alive. You better give me a farewell kiss right now. Please, I don't even drink the water down here. <laughs> George, what we've got to do is outsmart them. Oh? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll tell you, you work on Bobo and I'll work on Pedro. Come back here. Now, you know Pedro is very well armed. <laughs> Need I say more? <laughs> Her legs ain't bad either, you know. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Right. I know how I can throw Bobo completely off guard. How? how? I'll turn on my charm. Oh, that faucet's been disconnected for years. <laughs> now, here's what I'll do, George. While I'm flirting with him, you sneak out the window and run for help. What? Okay? The window? Huh? Yes. All right, I'll now, do it. Just watch him sizzle when I give him my sexy walk. Your sexy mm -hmm. walk, you do that. You know, when I was in the army, we had a Sherman tank that moved faster than that. <laughs> and went bang, besides. Do you think maybe I ought to try it with hand grenades? <laughs> Nike missiles wouldn't help you. <laughs> Bobo, where did you ever get such a sweet face? My mother was frightened by Elliot Ness. <laughs> Clara's mother was frightened by Snow White, and that's why she looked like the seven dwarfs on a totem pole. <laughs> Bobo, come 
over here and sit next to Clary Wary. <laughs> oh, nutsy watsy. <laughs> Come on, get this over with quicksy witsy willy because I want my nummy nummy because it's time for jammy time. <laughs> I want to go to jammy time. Quiet, George! <laughs> Bobo. Once in the life of every woman, there comes an electric moment when she dares to tip throw through the garden of paradise <laughs> with her prince of dreams and toss rose petals to the doves of Lamour. Huh? <laughs> she got that off a sardine can. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. You, Bobo, me, Clara. And I want to go Jimmy time! <laughs> hey, you look familiar. Now, wasn't you the broad who come out of the cake at Bugs Moran's stag party? Uh, yes, yeah. that's right. I was wearing my meringue moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look into my eyes, Bobo. Can't you see that they're saying yes, yes, yes? But the rest of you saying no, no, no. Oh, <laughs> uh, look, I'm hungry. I'm going to get something to eat. No, don't do that. Tell me where the window is. Stop. We can't oh, get out of here. Oh. Hey, wait oh. a minute. Are you trying to pull a fast one? No, no, no. Just trying to get out. I oh, mean, uh... George, what a nincompoop you are. George Appleby, if there was a stupid event in the Olympics, you'd win the gold medal. So help me. If they ever want to build an idiot, they could use you for a blueprint. Big deal. It's nice to know that you're number one in your field, right? <laughs> Why, you... Hold I... it, sister. You can't treat him that way. She That's can't. your husband. Nah. Don't remind me. What kind of a wife are you? Don't you know a man's home is his castle? Well, yeah, a man's home is his castle. Next time that dragon mother of yours comes across my drawbridge, I'm going to kick her in the moat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And after this... <laughs> and after this, when my eat with a dog, I want my own bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You tell them. Boy, you ad lib a lot there. They give you a big part, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, so get this straight. <laughs> as long as I'm around, you're going to be nice to them. You mean that? Yeah, I sure do. I can't stand a husband beater. <laughs> ah, Senor Bobo, throw up your hands. I am Sergeant Martinez of the Royal Mexican Mounted Police. <laughs> Boy, are you lost. <laughs> Come with me. I am taking you back to prison. To prison, not him. Yes. Why? Yeah. Keep him covered. Keep him covered. George, why did you do that? Yeah, why? Well, because the three of us, we're going to make a perfect couple. Bobo, you're coming home to live with us. You're going to have a permanent hideaway. Oh, Pedro! Now, what do you want with Pedro? <laughs> I don't know about you folks, I'm getting out of here. She just dropped her hanger grenades. <laughs> well, what do I want with her? Well, with an extra guest in the house, we're going to need a houseboy. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, it's always a pleasure to welcome back to our show a gifted actress and talented comedian, Miss Eve Arden. Uh, Thank like you, that. Red. It's nice to be here. Thank you. You know something? You're really amazing. Really? Mm -hmm. I'd rather be amusing, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, you're certainly that. But I mean, in the sketch, you let me slap you and punch you, and the only time you so show any sign of pain is when you give me my check. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> you want to see some real pain? Wait till you try to catch <laughs> Hey, let me give you a compliment instead of more money. The, uh, you know, of all the guests we have, they're all lovely people that we get on the show, but you seem to be more calm and more relaxed than any of the others. How do you do it? Well, I just think of all my years in show business, and I say to myself, I'm Eve Arden. I'm Eve Arden. That do it. Why don't you try it? It stop me from being nervous. Uh-huh. I'm Eve Arden. <laughs> I'm Eve Arden. Didn't do anything. No, about. because I'm beginning to feel like Eve Arden. <laughs> On top of that, a guy down there winked at me. 
We'd like for you to meet our other guest star on the show tonight. Oh. We... <laughs> that always hits me so funny. We rehearsed this all day and we all look surprised. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a very talented actor and Hollywood's own Elliot Ness, Mr. Robert Stack. You know, um, uh, uh, Miss Arden and my we, we, self, we were just talking about people being frightened when they come out in front of the stage. They get the jitters. Uh, what do you do when you're nervous? Shake? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I do. I shake. And you know, Red, sometimes, sometimes, after having stolen my line, I also cry a little. <laughs> you cry. You cry? That's right. Say, I could never imagine you with the jitters. Big, strong, tough guy like you, like in uh, Untouchables. I, I tell you. Uh, you talk about acting? You top that, buddy. <laughs> I just ripped my back. <laughs> I saw you in the Untouchables. Boy, you were mean. Your eyes were mean, and your teeth were clenched, and your face was tense. Like you just finished eating out at the CBS truck. <laughs> no, Red, that was all pure acting and three shots of Novocaine. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Now that we have this talent out here, let's do little one-minute dramas, huh? Oh, that'd right? be now, the first one will be how television stars make love. Right? You ready? Ready. Ready. Okay. I ripped my pocket. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Red. TV actors making love, is yeah. this the American version or the Italian version? Well, it'll have to be the American version. This show goes through Pasadena, you know. Oh. <laughs> you ready? Mm -hmm. We need the cue cards and stuff. Here we are. Look at... Don't look behind you. Don't. Oh, He'll no. scare you to death. <laughs> I don't like to say this, but there's going to be trouble in that hearse and find you gone, buddy. <laughs> you all right? You've been eating potatoes again. <laughs> My leg is killing me. <laughs> Darling. Darling. <laughs> die, die, love you. Die. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yep, the glub glub. <laughs> I love you. You do. Will you marry me? Okay? <laughs> you mean? Excuse me, Red. <laughs> Well, so it won't be a total loss. Come on, I'll take you out and get you Coca-Cola. <laughs> the, the, next, the, next, the next little one-minute drama is uh, a fella taking his girl home at night. A fella taking his girl home. Oh, I had a lovely evening. <laughs> you know, my mother was so thrilled that I was out with my chemistry professor. Uh, hmm. Oh, dear, I've forgotten my key. No trouble at all. No trouble uh, at all. I have it right here. As you can see, she lives in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> the next, next little one-minute drama is called The Accident. The Accident. The next, next little one-minute drama is The Accident. They're not ready yet. <laughs> the, uh, if we do this, it'll be an accident. Oh, great. Oh, oh, Good oh, heavens, oh, Dean Martin! Oh, Did you have an accident? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saving this place for a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I should have stole that line, too. <laughs> did that bus hit you? Yeah, uh, yeah. It did, huh? Yeah. Did he give you any kind of hand signal? No. Click uh, the tail light or anything? No, no. Has the insurance adjuster been here yet? No, no. Mind if I lay down with you? <laughs> Ne 
Nick Nixman is called the genius. <laughs> the genius. The genius. Bring the genius out. Yeah. Oh, boy. Put that in the car. <laughs> Wilbur Wright, you and your brother Orville and your crazy inventions. Hmm. Why don't you give up? Man was not meant to fly. Don't be too sure about that, dear. No, you'll never get man to fly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are very proud to present Johnny Rivers, the young romantic recording artist. And when he sings those river ballads, the girls start swimming upstream. <laughs> Say I'm the life of the party Cause I tell a joke or two Although I may be laughing loud and hearty Deep inside I'm blue So take a good look at my face You see my smile
need somebody, not just anybody, I need someone. When I was younger, so much younger than today, I never needed anybody's help in any way. Now those days are gone and I'm not so self-assured And I find I've changed my mind and opened up the door Help me if you can, I'm feeling down And I do appreciate you being around Help me get my feet back on the ground Won't you please Please help me You know my life has changed in through so many ways My independence seems to vanish in the haze And every now and then I get so insecure And I know I need you girl like I've never done before Oh, tell me if you can, I'm feeling down And I do appreciate you being right now Help me get my feet back on the ground Won't you please help me The Silent Spot, starring Red Skelton. Tonight, we join Red in the romantic Hawaiian Islands as he plays the part of a typical tourist.
Don't go away. Red will be back in a minute. Here he is again, Red Skelton. Ladies and gentlemen, our sponsors and staff really realize that product and entertainment must serve to bring happiness into the home. So if during this past hour we've given you but one second of pleasure, then our intent toward that happiness has been fulfilled. Thank you very much for allowing us to visit. Goodbye for now, and may God bless. Good night. The song, The Tracks of My Tears, was pre-recorded. Art Gilmore speaking. <laughs>